What is going on you guys? How are you all doing today? I hope you guys are doing fantastic. Today, hopefully, like I said, fingers crossed from the previous videos, I will be replacing the crankshaft positioning sensor and that will be fixing all the issues that my car has been experiencing. If you guys are just tuning into this video and have no idea what's going on or what the status of my car has been, be sure to watch my last two videos where I kind of talk about what's been going with my car. Currently, it will not start, it's down. Engine is in limp mode, transmission is in limp mode. I think it's the crankshaft positioning sensor that's faulty on the car, so I'm going to go ahead and replace it. I finally got the part today. Let's get right into the video. As you guys can see, I've actually started already cracking away at this, trying to get this sensor replaced. But uh, first thing that you're gonna need to do uh, for this job if you want to access the crankshaft positioning sensor is that you're going to have to remove your air intake so I have the DCI filters so it was really easy just pop them off if you have the stock air box you're going to need to remove that the whole unit and take that out as well as basically remove the cowl your cabin air filter kind of get all that out if you guys don't know how to do that there's a ton of really good videos on there it's super easy to do it takes like literally five minutes to do that and then from there you can access the crankshaft positioning sensor now as far as the tools that you're going to need according to the the forum that i was reading the diy off of you're just going to need a ratchet with like a nice extension as well as an e8 socket to get the bolt out and then you're also going to need just a flathead screwdriver and i believe that's it and inside this little box that i ordered off of fcp euro is the new crankshaft positioning sensor uh, the reason why I order off of FCP Euro, you guys, is they have lifetime warranty on all of their parts. Everything you order is comes with an automatic lifetime warranty. There's no extra charge, no nothing, and they also have hassle-free returns. So if you accidentally order the uh, wrong part or something like that, you know, they're not going to give you a bunch of BS. You just send it back, return it, they'll give you a refund, and that's the end of it. So really good company to buy from, and uh, if you own a German car, you know, FCP Euro is the way to go. So this sensor is actually like a pain in the ass to locate. It actually took me a good like 20 minutes just to find it because it's actually, it's really hidden. There's a ton of other wires and stuff. Um, but the, sen the sensor is located right under the starter. I'm gonna show you guys right now and try to make it as easy as possible to follow. But forgive me you guys because it's really hard to get a camera uh, kind of down in this angle as well as to get light on it at the same time. But I'm gonna try to get it for you guys so that if you guys ever run into this problem, you know, hopefully this video will make it as easy as possible for you guys. Yeah, so I'm having basically like an impossible time trying to hold my phone for lighting as well as uh, recording at the same time to show you guys the sensor, but I'm just gonna show you the area. So the way that I was able to find it is if you come back here, kind of behind this strut brace, and I apologize, it's extremely dark, but basically if you follow my finger, which I know it's gonna be really hard to do, it's located under there, you're gonna have to kind of move some wires around and stuff to see it, but it's it's in there. And you can see there's like a little bracket holding it, and then there's also that little bolt that's uh, holding it down as well. And uh, I'm not gonna lie guys, this looks like it's gonna be a bitch to take out, um, but we'll see. I'll keep you guys updated. Oh yeah, you don't wanna like drop it. Right, yeah, if it falls in the engine bay then. It's a goner. Yeah, it's a goner. <laughs> that's pretty scary. You usually never find those. Yeah, it's gonna be a bitch to find. So. It's like not twisting though anymore. Yeah, you gotta like try and untwist it with with your hands. Cause you might just be uh, turning it back on. That's what I'm trying to do, bro. Oh, okay, okay. Just making sure, bro. I know, I got you. Sometimes they're stubborn, bro. It's all good, just play the with the problem is I more. have no, like I can't grab it and like turn it. Like I'm trying to just turn it with the side of my finger. Cause I can't get two fingers on it. Get the magnet on it and start turning with that maybe that'll maybe it'll be loose enough okay. to where to where it'll start like turning by itself so just a quick update we actually got the uh crankshaft positioning sensor off marcel being super mechanically inclined took him like 10 minutes and he got it off even though i was struggling to get the bolts off but yeah guys like getting the bolts off down there was a pretty big pain um you really gotta like like you gotta finesse it like i know i say that all the time but like you really gotta finesse it like it's, it wasn't easy, so it definitely takes some time and it takes a lot of patience doing this because just the sensor itself is located so far down into the engine that that's what makes it difficult. But anyway, we got the sensor off. 
pulled the old O-ring off. We're actually about to run down to the store because I have to go get a new O-ring because the one that I bought didn't come with an O-ring, I guess. So um, gotta get a new O-ring for that. And then from there, hopefully we'll put on the new sensor. Here's another thing that's really concerning though. So after pulling off the intakes, my intakes that I have, these are SSR performance intakes. If you look inside, they seem to be deteriorating. Like there's red shavings all inside the intakes, as you can see, you know, with the light on there. And uh, that's pretty scary. I looked and um, we're gonna check to see if that, if this stuff kind of ended up in the intake tract and hopefully it didn't. If it did, then we're gonna go ahead and clean it out. And I'm just gonna trash these intakes and buy some new ones, you guys, because this is no bueno. This is literally shit quality. The fact that they're deteriorating and I've only had these for like a year, so that's not good. All right, so what are we doing here? So we're about to, after, so we replaced the sensor. We are about to clear the codes and then start her up. Fingers crossed this did it, guys. I'm not gonna keep my hopes up though. Dun, dun, dun. It starts up. I didn't get an engine reduced power. I didn't get a transmission malfunction. I didn't get all that DSC crap. Car seems to be running good. Um, I haven't driven the car yet because I don't want to drive it yet because of what I saw with the intakes. So I'm going to clean out my intake tract. Um, I'm going to flush out the oil, put some fresh oil in there, change that all out. And then from there, I'll start it up and uh, make sure that car is running fine. I'm gonna also put in some new filters. I'm, I might even throw the stock air box if I still have it. Um, back onto the car, but you guys I am so relieved that yes indeed it was the sensor issue This crankshaft positioning sensor if it goes bad on your car, it will cause a crap ton of problems So be prepared. Um, that's why it's really good to have that scan tool on hand because you can diagnose whatever codes it might be Also guys, I do apologize for the fact that this wasn't really a DIY It never ends up like really being a full-on DIY in my videos just because like first off I'm really amateur when it comes to all this stuff like I'm learning just as much as you guys are with this process I'm by no means a technician or a, you know professional mechanic um, but this sensor specifically is really really hard to access because it's so deep within the engine Yes, it is possible to do it from the top um, You really just got to finesse it You got to just have patience with it and just work with it as far as re the replacement process is really easy It's just trying to access the little bolts and stuff that becomes a little tricky so um, it did take about two hours to replace this, I would say, but I've seen people on the forums do it in like 10 to 15 minutes. So it all just depends on your skill level. Anyway guys, so for now, I do believe the car is fixed. Uh, if anything, yes, that sensor was bad for sure. So I do know that, you know, replacing that did seem to solve a lot of the issues. I don't think my car is in limp mode or anything, but like I said, I have to drive the car really to find out what's up with it. And uh, if it's fully 100% fixed, but I think for now we should be good. Like I said, I'm gonna do an oil change, get some new uh, filters on there, or I might throw on the stock air box, and you know, we'll see where what to do from there. I'm so much more relieved, guys, and I'm so happy, but thank you so much, everyone, for your patience, for all the support and the help in the comment section and everything. Really, really does mean a lot to me. So I do appreciate that, guys, quite a bit. Anyway, I will catch you all in the next video. If you guys have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down in the comment section down below, of course, as always, and thank you so much. I will catch you all in the next one. Peace out.